was Congressman Richard Kleber, who's on your ID sheet. Now, Congressman means they're at one branch of Congress. If I say Congressman, they're in the House. Very good. So, his first political job was that of a secretary, a congressional secretary. He served as congressional secretary to Congressman Richard Kleber from 1932 until 1937. Five years he served as a congressional secretary for Richard Kleber. Now this is kind of interesting because Kleberg was an interesting guy. He was, he was more interested in the high life of the position. What does that mean, the high life? The power and the, you know, the public relations and going to the parties and saying, hey, I'm a congressman. So who really ran his office, really ran his whole office? Mm -hmm. Lyndon Johnson. So he practically ran Kleberg's office and did everything that a congressman would do because Congressman Kleberg was so much more interested in the high life of the position rather than getting anything done. He liked the position, he liked the esteem, he liked the public relations and the parties and all that kind of business, but he didn't really like the work. And Lyndon Johnson did the work for him. Well, during the time he worked for Kleber, on September 12, 1934, he met a young lady by the name of Claudia Alta Taylor. So, on September 12th of 1934, while he was working for Kleber, he met a young lady by the name of Claudia Alta Taylor. Now, most people didn't know her as Claudia Alta Taylor. She was better known to family and friends as Ladybird. Better known to family and friends as Ladybird. You've all heard of Lady, Ladybird Johnson, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of interesting because she got that nickname when she was just 12 years old. She went to the doctor one time and the nurse that was, you know, assisting the doctor said, <coughs> she's as pretty as a Ladybird. And that just stuck. And she became Lady Bird since the time she was 12. Kind of how nicknames happen. Well, they first meet on when? Okay, on their first date, fellas, pay attention here. On their first date, which was a breakfast date and a long drive in the country, Johnson proposed. What? Yeah! What? First date, oh, which I was, was a breakfast date and a long drive in the country, he proposed. Well, shortly after September 12th of 1934. Now, Lady Bird really didn't want to rush into marriage, but she did accept his proposal. What? That's wacky. They didn't know each other at all before then? Not much. Okay, listen up. Ten weeks later, they were married on November 17th, 1934 in San Antonio, Texas. Ten weeks later, on November 17th, 1934, they were, a couple were married. They didn't, he was a mover and a groover, man. He must have found the one he wanted. Now, Mrs. Johnson had some trouble. She had three miscarriages prior to having two daughters. So she had three miscarriages, and then they were fortunate enough to have two daughters. The oldest daughter's name was Linda, L-Y-N-D-A. She was born in 1944. And their youngest daughter's name was Lucy, L-U-C-I, and she was born in 1947. So. They were married on November 17, 1934 in San Antonio, Texas. After three miscarriages, the couple finally had two daughters, Linda, L-Y-N-D-A, who was born in 1944, and Lucy, L-U-C-I, who was born in 1947. Now, what do you think Johnson did in 1937 after he got done working for Kleberg? He decided for run, to run for Congress himself. And what happened is a congressman by the name of James P. Buchanan died in office. 
And so when, a, when somebody dies in office, then they will open up a race and they will elect someone to fill the remainder of that term. So Johnson sets his sight on Congress in 1937. He decides that he will attempt to fill the seat of James P. Buchanan, who had died in office. Now, this costs money, and Lady Bird had inherited $10,000 from a family death, and she put all $10,000 into that campaign to help her husband try to win that temporary seat in the House. So Lady Bird provided the money for his campaign. She took $10,000 from an inheritance from her mother's estate to help start her husband's political career, and Johnson was successful in his bid to replace Buchanan in the House of Representatives. Okay? So he wins that term. I would just tell you again that he was, a, he was elected to his own term in 1938 and was elected another time to a second of his own terms in 1940. So he did a good job. He takes over for Buchanan. He fills the remainder of his term. He's, re, he's not re-elected. He's elected to his own term in 1938 and then is re-elected to another term in 1940. And what does he decide to do in 1941 that we'll talk about tomorrow? <coughs> run for the Senate. Yep, he'll run for the Senate. Okay, and we'll continue the profile tomorrow, kiddos, and move on through history.